Right Barra fans, so welcome back to another vlog of the transfers that's going to be hopefully happening, not happening, have happened, in, out, check it all about. So this will be the transfer update number two. And um, the big news is Martin Piero's left on loan. That's probably not the big news for everyone else, but that's the big news for me. Piero's gone on loan. Uh, would I like to have a bit more of a chance at Barra? Yes, but if the lad's homesick and Wilder thinks his attitude's not up to scratch for what he should be doing, then it was the right move for him. But he's only on loan. Could he come back, break into the team next season? I believe it only if Wilder's gone. And I don't see that happening anytime soon because he's doing very well. So well, that's probably the end of Martin Piero. But the good thing is the lad looks abandoned. He's even joined a team with a poor colour choice, but Borough style shirt, so fair enough. The other one is we've sold Jed Spence. Jed Spence. And that's enough for that. Um, we've brought in Zach Stefan officially now on loan from Man City. This is something that I, I'm one of these who I've only ever seen him play once. For Man City, and that was against Liverpool where he made a massive howler, but everyone else seems to think he's an amazing keeper. So I will reserve judgment and I will go with the masses and say we've got the best keeper in the league. When I say the masses, Chris Wilder stated that last night on BBC Tees. <clears throat> and if you haven't got to listen to that interview, I'll try and pop a link down to it in the description. Go and check it out, it's about an hour long. Uh, there's some funny bits, there's some bits about what he had to deal with when his old clubs went through administration. There's transfer updates on Strikers, Tav and a few other things. So that link will be down below. <clears throat> now before getting to anything else, um, just remember if you like this type of video or if you like the videos on this channel, remember to like, subscribe. Any thumbs up will make other Borough fans hopefully see this and then we can all come together as one big family. One thing I'm not going to touch on is the price of tickets this season because I think everybody on Twitter has done that for me. As someone who costs them probably the price of a season ticket to go and watch one game, it's not great that they keep putting the prices up, but they're a business. Economy's terrible, so I get why they're doing it, but know your area, and I'm not going to go into that anymore. But I will be getting to a few games. I plan on getting to more games than I've ever got to before this season. So we'll see how that goes. And now carrying on with transfers. Or should I say transfer rumours. Because this is all rumoured. Um, possible outgoing to Grant Hall. Apparently Rotherham are coming in for him. That's good for us. He says it's a loan. But it's better to have his wages off the books. If he's not going to play for us. So he might as well go out on loan. Wages off the books. Frees up a little bit of money hopefully. For us to possibly sign a striker in 2035. Other rumours are. Well one not rumour is. Akpom is training with the first team again. Now I don't really get this. I know that we're short of strikers. And maybe he's shown something. To possibly the reserve coaches or something. That's. They've gone to Wilder and gone, give this guy a shot. But I think it's more of the fact that he's possibly just trying to get him up to fitness to then ship him out for the possible incoming of strikers. Now, we'll go to strikers. Um, from the last one, David McGoldrick's gone to Derby. By the way, they are doing they are doing some good business. They will smash the league below. You've got um, Jordan Rhodes. Again, it's been linked, but Huddersfield want a stupid amount of money for someone they're probably not going to play. And we all know Steve Gibson isn't going to be doing that. Possible outgoings. The worst thing would be Tav. Now, Bournemouth and Forest have both bid 10 million. There's rumours of Everton and Leicester both wanting him. Everton haven't really got the money because as much as they spent a lot last season... Um, when they had to prove their financial fair play, shall we say, 
it turns out that they were like 50 million in the hole or something. So they sold Richarlison for 60 and it's probably given them about 10 million to play with. Borough aren't accepting 10, so I say that's Evan out of the running. Um, Leicester, again, is a rumour. I think there's more chance of him going to possibly Bournemouth. I don't see him going to Forest now because they signed Lingard yesterday. So, to have to Bournemouth, possibly. Um, again, if you listen to Wilder's interview, he mentions it. He mentions he wants to keep him, but every player has a price tag. Middlesbrough is a business, and it's what's best for the football club. So to me, that sounds like he wants to keep him, but he doesn't think he's going to stay. But hopefully Tav doesn't go anywhere. The Obviously, the players have just been to Portugal. They're back from Portugal now. They uh, beat Mansfield the other night. They've beat Bishop Auckland. They've beat York. They lost to Braga on their last game in Portugal. And they've got Olympiacos tonight. Ideal. Hopefully I get to somehow stream that. Another striker who looks to have got away is Dwight Gale. Uh, apparently Steve Gibson is turning his head. Doesn't really want players over 30. I believe was, I don't want players over 30 that are demanding a high wage. So if that's the case, coming down from the Premier League, he probably does want a fair bit of money. He's not getting any younger, he's 32, so he wants to make all the money he can. Fair play to the lad. But that one seems to have gone, although it looks like Stoke are now going to sign him on a permanent for free. So maybe that wage demand would have evened itself out with no fee, really. Don't know. Um, for those who aren't going to watch the interview, to be fair, you've probably seen it all over Twitter anyway, or Facebook, or various social medias that Chris Wilder has said that there's three bids in for Premier League strikers now I'm going to suggest some names you let me know in the comments what you think if you think these are a good fit for us or not first one I mentioned him in the last video Adam Armstrong now I believe that is somebody that Borough have gone in for um, I believe there's been talks and the fact that Southampton have just signed a new striker. Makes me think Armstrong is now going to be free to talk to people and leave. Problem is, there's rumours of Watford, and there's rumours of West Brom possibly. And for him, the thing is with Borough and the attacking options we have, he's guaranteed to start games. He's guaranteed to start games, and let's face it, after watching the first half display by Ryan Giles the other day and looking at uh, Zaya Jones, he's going to get some service. So let's just hope that's one of the players. I think another one's going to be uh, Rodrigo Munez from Fulham. He's just turned 22, so he's still young. Again, it would be a loan. They wouldn't be buying him unless it's a loan to buy situation. Don't know. Um, do I see him coming? Yeah, I think realistically you've got a 7 out of 10 chance of getting uh, Munez. Probably the same for Adam Armstrong. Since the last video I made, we were linked with um, Thomas Henry. I saw T. Henry and I was like, ah, he's coming out of retirement. No, Thomas Henry. But he's gone to Verona, I believe. And he's been replaced by the one and only uh, Pally Fanny lover that is Aaron Connolly. Not really going to talk anymore on Aaron Connolly. I think people said enough about him last year. I don't get that move, but hey, Brian clearly see what we all saw last year and the fact that they don't feel he's good enough. We've also been linked with, um, is that Anton Semenyo, the lad from Bristol City. Now, yes, I would like him to come do I see it happening I don't know are Bristol going to get rid of one of their best players do they need the money I don't really know obviously the Spence money's probably burning a hole in Gibson's pocket well, actually it won't it's Gibson it won't be burning a hole in his pocket at all um, but we've been linked with him 22 year old did well towards the end of last season again someone who knows where the goal is but I believe he also had 12 assists last year so he can play up front or he could possibly play on the wing it's, I don't know. 
we'll have to wait and see. That's one I would like to happen. Do I see it happening? I would give that probably a five, maybe a six out of ten chance of happening. But I don't know the dealings that's going on in the background. Someone else we've been recently linked with was Sam Gallagher. Um, again, he's one of these players that I think if you're looking for promotion, do you want Sam Gallagher? Do you just want to buy all of Blackburn's team? If you're going after a Blackburn striker, wouldn't you go after Diaz? I don't, I don't get that one personally. But <clears throat> he could come in, he could be a worldy, or he could come in, and as we've mentioned, the Aaron Connolly situation, I could see that happen again. The last thing he needs is fans on his back because he's not performing. And Force from Brentford has also been linked. Now, uh, Wilder said there's three um, approaches for Premier League players. I'm going to go out on the limb and say one has been Armstrong, one has been Munez, and then <clears throat> it could be either Force of Brentford, could be Cameron Archer of Villa. I'm hoping it's Liam Delap from Man City, but again, I'd give that probably a 3 out of 10 going to happen. Cameron Archer is probably more like a 4 or 5 out of 10. Again, Villa would have to get someone else in. Archer's just scored in pre-season. Um, wouldn't surprise me if Stevie G keeps him there. And as for Force, I don't really know much about him, so I don't know if he's going to be a good acquisition if we got him or not. That could be the third striker that we've gone him for. But Wilder said it's a waiting game. That's great. But it's, what is it, eight days until Borough kick off the season. So <clears throat> that's not the best thing you want to be in from your manager. Is oh, like we're willing to wait. And don't get me wrong, I think what more and Josh can score goals. But I don't know. To me, that doesn't fill me with promotion, as it stands. I know there's, was it 40-odd 40, 40 days left, 40 days left of the transfer window, and yes, we could bring, bring more people in, but I don't know. I still think we're short left centre-back. We're short one, possibly two midfielders, three if Tav goes, and then we're short three strikers. So you're looking at possibly eight players we need. And we've not been able to sign more than four in probably 50 days. And we've only got four days left to sign eight. So <clears throat> I don't know. It's all going to depend what happens. Maybe if Tav does go, they can get some kind of swap deal in place. But I don't, I don't really know Bournemouth's team to know if we would like anyone from there. And as I said, I don't see him going to Forest because they've just signed Lingard. I was going to touch on the squad numbers, but there's no point because it's an absolute joke. Um, 17 players, 14 outfield players, more goalies and strikers. It's That's just not good going into a first game against West Brom. I know it's only one game, but if you go into that game against West Brom, we've done some good business and you get smashed off the park. That's going to dent confidence for a good few weeks after. So <clears throat> it's a bit worrying. I'm hoping... Southampton seal the deal for this player they've got over having a medical today and hopefully within the next two days we can get Armstrong at Borough. My first choice out of all the strikers we're linked with would be Armstrong, next would be Munez and then third I would probably like the lad from Bristol City just because he would be a permanent not alone but if not uh, Liam Delap or Cameron Archer for me. But, I don't know, it's going to go for one of them where I'm saying, oh no, it's terrible. And then if we sign three strikers, especially the first two I named, it'll be like, oh no, we're going to win the league. We're going to walk the league. It's easy. But, it's one of them. Um, other things that I wanted to quickly touch on, the home kit has been launched. Be honest, from some stuff I saw online from the first day, I wasn't that impressed. There was quite a few kits I were afraid. There was stuff with the sponsor being coming off. Um, 
yeah, it was just a bit disappointing seeing that people were paid a shed load of money for them. <clears throat> and I'm not going to talk about mini kits because it's going to cost me an arm and leg this season. I've not bought any of this year's kits yet. One, because I prefer the away shirt this season, which I like the home shirt as well, to be honest. When it first came out, I was like, nah, not for me. Not the biggest fan of it. Seeing it on the players, completely different perspective. Like it now. Away kit, really like. Got a feeling there's going to be a third kit. Um, and I've then got to buy kits for my two children, which they don't do them in mini kit size anymore. And they are going to want full kits. So I believe it works out to about £70 per child, plus three adult shirts for me. And possibly the, like, warm-up training top thing with a zip with a band across so yeah it looks like power is getting all my money and that's not including the like 300 pound per trip it takes me to go up to the riverside so yeah you're welcome borough completely got off topic anyway guys let me know what you think of firstly the kits if there is a third kit what color would you like it to be i personally would like it to be either black or green but I don't know as um if you haven't seen go and check out nico on twitter uh, nico 77 i think his username is his concept kits are amazing he needs to be involved in Burroughs kits next season simple as that right guys so that's all the time we've got it's not time we've got that's just all the information i've got for you at this moment in time let me do a time let us know in the comments one who be a priority two if there's a third kit what color you would like it to be and three, what is your favourite of the two kits released? Um, remember to like, share this to any of our fans in any of the forums on social media or Twitter or anything. If you've enjoyed this video, <clears throat> you're probably thinking, shut up, you're Jana weirdo. But unfortunately, I'm away for the first. I'm working a 12-hour shift for the West Brom game. And then I'm away for the first three weeks of August. So the first game I'm hoping to get to, I don't know if I will be, will be the Sunderland game at home. Ticket dependent, um, but we're going to have to see what we can do. So anyway, guys, a massive thank you for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, comment your comments down below if there's anything you think I've missed or anything you would like to see in a future video. Again, let us know. This will be once the tran transfer window closes, maybe even before turning into a kind of a podcast style with me, Pete, the other lad who co-founded the Southwest supporters, plus possibly guests and stuff. <clears throat> we have spoken to a few ex-players and stuff who are up for it. So we're going to try and get that done as well. And apart from that, guys, massive thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Up the borough!